Using contrast is a great way to be able to convey different moods within your photographs. And in utilizing contrast, you can get everything from an edgy image to a dreamlike image. Contrast is the difference between the brightest and the darkest parts of your photograph. And in a way, it's linked to dynamic range. Old video cameras that had a very low dynamic range often produced a really contrasty image. Whereas modern cameras can produce images with a very low contrast and a flat picture profile. As well as the limitations of the camera you might be using, there's also the contrast of the scene itself. For instance, in this shot, I've got a really bright sky behind me and really dark mountains on this side. That's quite a high contrast scene. If you have a really bright sky backlighting a scene, this will give you a high contrast image. Whereas if everything is lit well and the highlights and shadows aren't too far apart, this will then give you a low contrast image. I look at photography in a modular way, and if I want to learn something, I'll try and remove all other distractions. Now with contrast, color can be a huge distraction, as it almost masks the contrast that you have in your shot. So if you want to work just on contrast in your photographs, try setting your camera to black and white. You can normally do this in the creative styles, and it'll give you a very different shooting experience. In saying this, you can use contrast in colour photographs, and the bigger the contrast between the darkest and brightest shots, the bigger the difference there will be with certain colours, because different colours have different luminosities, and luminosities is a posh word for brightness. If you increase the contrast slider in your editing program, notice that the photograph starts to look more saturated. This is because in increasing the contrast slider, this is pushing the edges of the brightest and darkest parts of your photograph apart. And a byproduct of this is the increase of that saturation. Because like I've already said, different colors have different brightnesses. And when you increase the contrast, you change the difference between the darkest and brightest parts of your photograph. When I'm making changes to the contrast, I'll often counter this with changes to the saturation, decreasing saturation with an increase in contrast and increasing saturation when I decrease contrast. But like I always say, be careful how much you push these sliders one way or the other. It's really easy to over edit your photograph. Subtlety is the key. A good way to start playing with contrast is to shoot in different directions. Try shooting with the direction of the sun and then try shooting in the opposite direction to the sun. It's amazing how different these two photographs will come out. And then try shooting across the angle of the sun as well and just see what you get from that. Photography is all about experimentation. So just try lots and lots of different things and the more experience that you build up, the more you'll have an understanding of what works and what doesn't. Now I find when you're shooting towards the sun, not necessarily with the sun in the frame, but towards it, you tend to get silhouettes, especially if there's something in the foreground between you and where the sun is coming from. If you shoot with the direction of the sun, it can give you a much lower contrast image. This is where your camera will handle conditions well. And if you shoot in any of the semi-automatic modes, you'll more than likely get a well-exposed photograph. When editing your photographs, you can increase the intensity of the contrast. There's a few different ways to do this. The most obvious one is to use the contrast slider. Then there's the black and white sliders. If you push the white slider to the right and the black slider to the left, this will increase the contrast. Whereas if you push them the other way, this will decrease the contrast. Curves can also change your contrast. If you drop a point in the middle and then drag the lower half down like this, it will increase the contrast. Whereas if you do the opposite, it will give you less contrast. There is also contrast between colors. If that contrast between the different colors in your shot is low, it can be seen as a very homogeneous shot. Whereas if the contrast is really high, it can create a slightly more dynamic scene. The shutter was painted completely red and the color contrast is low whereas this scene has a much higher contrast of colors. But then I could reduce this when editing, giving it a more subdued feel. When I am taking photographs, I always think about the angle at which I'm shooting compared to the angle of the sun. This can ultimately control how much contrast you have in your frame. And on top of this, I think about the time of day that I'm shooting as well. In the middle of the day, especially on a sunny day, you will get a lot higher contrast images compared to on a cloudy day. Like today, I'm out, early in the day, so I'm getting a nice softer light when I'm filming these videos. 
And that's one thing you really need to think about. What time of the day are you out and how much contrast you want in your shots. If you're getting too much contrast, you might have to go out earlier or stay out later. When you are out taking photographs on a sunny day, try putting your camera in aperture priority mode and then shooting towards the sun and then shooting away from the sun. It's amazing how much this can change the contrast in your shots. In becoming conscious about this, you can really use contrast to your advantage to start taking photographs with intention, which will inevitably make your photographs more impactful. Next week, I'll be talking about patterns in photography. And if it's already out, I'll link it here. I'll see you next time.